For over two years now, Heroes of the Storm has served as an exciting trans-dimensional shared Blizzard universe in which players are free to choose characters from each of Blizzard's beloved games to duke it out in MOBA-like fashion. But as universes tend to do, Heroes of the Storm has expanded greatly since its launch, and a lot has changed. Hi, I'm Brendan with the Leaderboard, and today we're going to see exactly what has changed since Blizzard launched Heroes of the Storm back in June 2nd of 2015. When we look at the game now, we'll see that a few things have been cut from the current iteration but you could also say that a whole new dimension's worth of new features have been added to stuff that void. With that said, let's get this party going and queue up for then versus now, Heroes of the Storm. Get comfy for this one, there's a lot to cover. <laughs> gameplay. Since launch, Heroes of the Storm has gotten 6 new maps, 30 new heroes, and of course, consistent balance changes. That's some dedication from Team Blizzard, but it doesn't end there. Not even close. Let's start by taking a look at the major changes and additions of gameplay options in the game. If you played back on launch, you might remember the sad ranking system that the game had at the time. To put it lightly, it was not a legit ranking system. Instead of viciously climbing over other players on a competitive ladder, as a legit ranked system should be, it often felt more more like bumping elbows on your way up an escalator. Let me explain. The old ranked system had players grinding out something like a second profile level stat that didn't reflect your rank at all, since thousands of other people could be the same rank as you. It was a disappointing system and many players felt that the game just wasn't as competitive as a top tier MOBA ought to be. Well that was then, and now the ranked system is all fixed up, with bronze to grandmaster tiers and rewards to boot. For those who enjoy the draft aspect of ranked mode but don't want to deal with the competitiveness of it, Blizzard also added an un ranked draft mode. This allowed players to ban heroes and pick their roles before the game starts. A lot of players, especially newbies, don't like to be assassinated in less than 3 seconds by a stealth character. This mode lets them avoid such quick play hazards. But that's not all in terms of gameplay options. Just like a lot of other Blizzard games, Heroes now does weekly brawls, which are unique gameplay modes that change every week. They didn't have this feature at launch, but included it later to keep things fresh in between grinding and ranked and doing casual play with the pals. It's a nice way to cool off and still earn loot in the process. Post 2.0 a lot of the biggest changes came after Blizzard's launch Heroes of the Storm 2.0. This was a massive patch and somewhat light relaunch that added a ton of new things to the game. Let's see exactly what changed after post 2.0. Overwatch crossover. Because Blizzard wanted each of their properties to be part of Heroes of the Storm, it was obvious that Overwatch would be included too. Tracer, the mascot character of Overwatch, entered the Nexus on April 26th, 2016, well before the renovation of Heroes into 2.0. But she was the only Overwatch character and only major Overwatch asset to be in the game for several months. Zarya finally joined Tracer on September 27th of the same year, and a few months after her on February 14th, 2017, Lucio Wall rode into the storm to support them. When Heroes 2.0 finally launched on April 25th, 2017, so too did Overwatch's major debut into Heroes of the Storm. Genji, everybody's favorite and simultaneously most hated offense character in Overwatch, was released as a playable character along with a new map, the Cyborg Ninja's hometown of Hanamura. A few weeks later, on May 16th, D.Va was released as the fifth Overwatch hero, allowing players to queue up as a full five-person Overwatch-themed pre-made. The update was presented along with an Overwatch-themed event called Nexus Challenge 2.0, which gave players the opportunity to compete in an event-related quest chain and earn exclusive skins for Genji and D.Va in Overwatch, as well as other Overwatch-themed items like mounts and player icons in Heroes of the Storm. But the Overwatch craze didn't stop after the additions of Overwatch characters, maps, and cosmetics. Loot Chests Overwatch's influence completely changed the way that Heroes of the Storm players were rewarded. Much like the loot boxes in Overwatch, Loot Chests were introduced to Heroes of the Storm in 2.0. Loot Chests often contain several random rewards, including characters and skins. They come in three different types, common, rare, and epic. And depending on the loot chest type, you have a higher chance of getting rarer items. There are two ways to get loot chests, just like in Overwatch. The first and cheaper option is to simply level up. Every five levels you get a rare loot chest, every 10 levels snags you a hero specific chest, and every 25 levels earns you an epic chest. Every other level gets you a common chest, which is a great way to get rewards consistently. For those players who have money to spare, are impatient, or are just too high level to rely on level ups for free chests, or somewhere in between all three of those, the second way to get loot chests is to buy them using real money. This way you can buy them in bulk and unbox them in bulk too. The drops are still random though, and just because you spent money on chests doesn't guarantee you'll get exactly what you want. It's a nerve-wracking gamble every time you crack open one of these bad boys, and the emotional roller coaster of highs and lows from each pop can become addicting, so be careful not to develop a gambling problem. 
Seriously, these things are addictive. Uncapped progression, hero experience changes. Now wait just a touch to a minute. If we get loot chests by leveling up, doesn't that mean that we'll eventually stop receiving free loot chests once we reach the ceiling? That would be the case, yes. If there even was a ceiling. For Heroes 2.0, Blizzard have pulled out all the stops on level progression. Having no level cap means that you can level up and earn loot chests forever, but since each level up requires progressively more experience points to earn, won't leveling up get impossibly hard after higher levels? No. While there may not be a limit to what level you could be, there is a limit of how much experience points are required to level up. The EXP requirement flattens out at 1,200,000 at level 12 and beyond. Phew, I mean, that's a big number, but it's not impossible, and it's actually less than half of what it used to be pre 2.0. Post 2.0, Blizzard have dramatically decreased the amount of EXP required to level up. Before 2.0, the EXP requirements would spike after each level, finally flattening out at level 12 at a lofty 4,750,000. Now that is just excessive, but still worth the loot chests. I told you, those things are super addictive. A renovated store. Heroes 2.0 came with a massive update to the store's user interface. Not only has it been changed visually, several new elements have been added to better reward the players for the resources that they collect. What do I mean by new elements? Introducing the new currency system! There are now three different kinds of currency that each serve a different purpose. Gems, the type of currency that you really want but will seldom get, are like real money currency and can be used to buy pretty much anything in the shop. Gold has been changed so that it's primarily used for purchasing heroes. Gold is also the most common type of currency and you can earn it by completing daily challenges and finishing matches. The third and last type of currency is shards, which can be used to forge cosmetic items and heroes. And any duplicate items you get are also converted into shards, which is very similar to Overwatch's gold system where you rely on the randomness of loot boxes in order to earn currency. Blizzard implemented this new system not only to highlight loot chests, but also to eliminate the direct usage of real money. Instead, Blizzard wanted players to be able to occasionally earn something similar to real money, gems, so that they can more feasibly buy the good stuff in the shop. If you can't afford to purchase gems for yourself, all you have to do now is play and you get something like an allowance to spend your heart's desire. Save up enough and you can eventually afford that one Zera tool skin you've always wanted. New item types. Along with those loot chests and revamped store came new item types. At first players were worried that these new items would just be filler used to stuff the loot chests so that skins would be a rarer drop, but as it turns out these new items are actually pretty dang sweet. The first item type on the list is the announcer, which lets you change the voiceover of every announcement to that of your favorite heroes. That means that whenever you get a takedown, kill streak, or siege the enemy base, you'll hear your favorite hero comment on your achievement. Finally, you can listen to Abathor's baritone voice rumbling from your headset and hear murky gargle and spit phrases out at you. Or maybe he's just choking down some fish bones again and needs your help. It's really hard to understand him sometimes. The second item type to be introduced is the spray. Sprays are exactly what they sound like. They're graphics that you can mark on the battlefield. But Blizzard took some of their sprays to the next level and animated them. I use the Murkshimi spray. It's so mouthwateringly macabre that enemies just have to stop and stare at it. Next up are banners. Flags that your character raises automatically whenever they destroy a fort, capture a mercenary camp, or complete an objective. There's a banner for each faction that exists in the Blizzard universe, which means that there are a lot to choose from. The basic banners look cool enough, but the war banners are where it's at. They look hecka schnazzy, especially when you place them on top of your enemy's decimated forts. Heroes 2.0 has added another cool cosmetic feature in voice lines, which have players' heroes say a specific line on command. Every hero has a default voice line as well as a few bonuses that you can buy or get off loot chests. The hot key to make your hero say their lines is I. Last in the list of new items are emojis. If you like using emojis while texting, you're gonna love them in Heroes 2.0. Wanna express something in the game but hate typing actual words and being transparent with how you feel? Use an emoji. My favorite is the Zarya speechless emoji. She does not look impressed. 73 new skins. Even though a ton of new item types were introduced, Blizzard didn't forget about the old ones. Not only did Blizzard create several pimp and new rides for players to roll around the new battlefields in, they also added 73 fresh new skins to the hero's collective wardrobe. I'm not gonna list off each one because that would take way too long, and also because a lot of them are just color variants, but here are a few notable ones. Prime Evil Diablo from Diablo 3, in case you ever wanted to see the Lord of Terrors strut around in heels. Oni Genji, for those sadistic players who want their victims to 
stare into the face of a demon while they're being assassinated, Sakura Oriel to go along with the new Hanamura map, and Cyber Demon Zarya, which sadly you can't get in Overwatch. Master Skins. Speaking of skins, there used to be these special skins called Master Skins which you had to earn the right to buy. That's right, just to be able to buy these skins you had to fulfill a certain requirement, which was to bring your mastery level with a certain character up to level 10. And even then you were only allowed to buy the Master Skin for that specific hero, which meant that you had to level up each character to 10 if you ever wanted all their Master Skins. The Master Skins cost 10,000 gold, which was a huge investment back then. But it was often worth it because the Master Skins were some of the coolest skins around and they earned you some serious cred with the community. Heroes 2.0, however, changed the way that Master Skins worked. They aren't called Master Skins anymore and their value has dropped significantly, now they're just rare quality. To get the Master, I mean these specific rare skins. Post 2.0, all you gotta do is open a loot box and get lucky. Or alternately, you can spend your precious gems on them, no character leveling required. As you can imagine, the player base was really divided on this change. Some argued that the cool thing about Master Skins was that they exhibited a player's dedication and prowess to their chosen character. They saw it as a worthy reward for having committed to a main. Also, being able to purchase the skins with gold was pretty convenient as opposed to using gems. Both currencies require a painstaking grind, but you earn gold more consistently. Others, however, argued that the time and effort required to earn level 10 just wasn't worth the payoff. A lot of players wanted to just buy and wear the skins without the grind. No extra effort, just instant gratification. Blizzard remains on the side of the latter's player base, favoring accessibility over exclusivity. They wanted more people to be able to get the skins without the tedium of continuously playing matches with the same character. Another reason Blizzard made this change was to free up some extra gold for players, so that they could purchase more heroes. Before, players had to choose between buying new heroes with their gold or purchasing the master skins. It was a tough choice to make with inevitable regret on both sides, so Blizzard axed the choice entirely. With the addition of gems and the change in how you spend gold, players now have the option to get both skins and new characters. Or you can get lucky and get both for free after earning a loot chest. Getting skins out of a loot chest feels so rewarding, like you just won the lottery. Mastery Taunts Blizzard predicted that players would lash out after having their bragging rights taken away from them, so they added a little something special for those who still wanted to flaunt their mains in-game. To replace Master Skins, Mastery Taunts were added as a bonus reward for players who hit level 15 with a character. The cool thing about these special commands is that after earning them, they level up alongside your character, reaching new tiers and gaining bits of animation at levels 25, 50, 75, and 100. So instead of capping your flaunt ability at level 10, you can now reach into even further heights of vanity. Taunt it up. It's not BM if it's earned, right? Loadouts. So how do you use all this awesome stuff anyways? Well, there's a new feature called the Loadout, which allows you to equip skins, mounts, sprays, banners, announcers, and emojis. The Loadout saved to each specific hero you set them up for, so you don't have to reload anything. It's convenient. Once you've equipped your Loadout, you can use the sprays, taunts, voice lines, and dances just by pulling up your action wheel with the X key by default, or go to your hotkeys menu and customize the inputs for yourself. Once you do either of these, you are set. Mega Hero Bundles. If you ever wanted to play Heroes of the Storm, but were intimidated with the huge amount of locked heroes you'd have to grind towards or purchase, Purchase, fear no more. Blizzard has collected and divided several heroes into class-specific bundles called Mega Hero Bundles. They come in three different categories based on roles, support, assassin, and tank. The Mega Hero Bundles are free, but you can only get one per account, so you better choose wisely. Are you going to go with the playstyle you're most comfortable with, or try a completely new rule and diversify your champion pool? With such a varied cast along with the customizability of the talent system, there are no wrong answers, and there's bound to be at least one character you like from each bundle. So if you're really having trouble choosing, close your eyes, wiggle your mouse, and click. That's how I came to know the pain and sadness, I mean joy and fulfillment, of being a support main. No regrets! <laughs> Some regrets. Since its release, Blizzard has been great about keeping Heroes of the Storm updated, with new content being released every month or so and huge changes coming in bulk. Who knows, in another year's time there might even be a Heroes 3.0 patch that brings other cool things to the game, like a permanent co-op mode, or dare I say, another new Blizzard property? Once again, I'm Brendan with the leaderboard, and those are all the major changes that Heroes of the Storm has undergone. Let us know in the comments below what you think the future has in store for Heroes of the Storm. Are there any changes that the game sorely needs that you want to see implemented? What about skins? I want more of those! Brainstorm it up in the comments, and while you're at it, click that little bell icon to become part of the notification squad. We have new videos dropping every week, so make sure to subscribe too. Thanks for watching the leaderboard, where we help you game smarter.